church. Oh, you know me better than that. Good evening, church. You know, I, I love this section here. They're all just stood up because they know my next assignment. Can we all rise to our feet in the name of Jesus? You know, I've been contemplating on what the Lord is doing in this house. You know, every Sunday we have the privilege of seeing an outpouring of his goodness. Do you guys agree? Yes. You know, um, today I had to experience the overflow. That just shows how much God is pouring new people into the church. And that is the good sign that we want, that even people like me end up in the overflow. Amen? Amen. Amen. So right now, I want to give God a massive thank you. I want to get the count of three and give God a massive thank you, and we'll enter a place of prayer. You guys ready? One, two, three. Thank you. So guys, help me join your faith with mine. Begin to speak in heavenly language right now. Oh, King of Glory, we've come here tonight to encounter your face. For your word says, deep cries out to deep. Oh Jesus, we are thankful for the blood, we are thankful for the cross. We are thankful, Lord, that you chose us. Roba setere kiyababa. Begin to speak intensively. Begin to intensify your tongues. Roba ye satere kiyabaro kataya. Roba sendere kiyandero kayaba. Roba re setere kiyaba. Oh, Roba ye setere re. Shoka ba ye re re siara kaba. Roba ye re re ya. Oh, King of Glory, King of Glory. Rio Rosso Toro Kia Baye. Roba Sendere Kataya. Rio Rosa Tere Kia Ba. Roba Baba Sitere Kata. Mandere Yoro Setere. Ro Kia Babaye. Ro Sotoro Kia Babaye. The Bible says, we not know what to pray for. It says, we not know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit in you, it makes inward groaning to the Father. So begin to allow him to groan. Oh, Holy Spirit, begin to cry out in us. Uh, let's all pray together as Esther comes onto the stage in a team. Everyone say, Dear Jesus, we've come here tonight to encounter you. So we lean on to the Holy Spirit who you sent onto us. As, a, as someone of revelation who will bring all truths back to us. So Holy Spirit, we commit this night. We commit our lives to you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, and everyone said,
Jesus. We look to you, Lord. Tonight our eyes are fixed upon the one and only King, Sayayama. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
Just sing that with me. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you for your power in the room. There is none like you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise tonight. We thank you for your spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you tonight. We thank you for what you're going to do in this room. We are expectant. We are hungry. We have gathered because we want more tonight. Meet us in this place, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. Tell them it's good to see them tonight. Hallelujah. You are looking good. If it's your first time here at Elam Wimbledon, give me a wave. Are there any first-time guests here tonight? Yeah, welcome to the house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We want you to connect to make this place your home. You can do so by scanning the QR code. You want to get connected. Add your details, your name and number, and you can become a part of this house. There's also a paper copy in front of the seat in front of you if you want to fill that out as well you can do that and then we want you to get on our growth track course where you become a part of what we're building here discover our vision discover our beliefs we get to discover your gifts and talents and then we're going to connect you in with our hubs and our serving teams but it all starts by scanning the qr code giving us your details and then we'll take you on that journey Uh, together. Amen? Amen. We're going to take communion tonight to the implements. Implements, is that the right word? Elements, that's the word I was looking for. The elements are being passed around. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Alia. If you were here in the house this morning, give me a wave if you were here. If you're here for the first time tonight, you're part of the house, give me a wave. I want to just see who, see who's here. It gives me an idea for what I want to say twice. And so, um, we'll take communion and then I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you. We're coming up to Easter. We're going to have a powerful Easter Sunday. We're going to have just one service again on Easter Sunday, just the 11 o'clock. I know you evening people, it's a sacrifice for you, but we want you to join us in the morning at 11. We're going to ram this place. Uh, You'll need to get here early. All the seats will be taken and outside as well. Uh, But we're going to do a giveaway. We're going to do great things, performance, dance, all sorts of stuff. You don't want to miss that service. But... I was saying this morning, often the, the, the cross is referred to as the darkest day in history. Can I tell you, I don't believe that. I believe that the moment Jesus died on the cross, it was the greatest day in history. I was in worship and I had a vision. And in the vision, I was walking in a field following a lamb. And I was following this lamb, you know, all fluffy, sheepish, you know, a lamb, what a lamb looks like. And I was following the lamb when the lamb turned round. And when the lamb turned round, it had a lion's face. And the lion began to roar. 
And for many in this world, they only know Jesus as the Lamb. But the time is coming when the Lamb begins to roar. Who, who knows? People only know one personality of Jesus. They only know this suffering servant of the Bible, this, this Jesus who bore our sins upon the cross. But that's not the only nature of Jesus. There is another nature to Jesus. He is the lion who is coming to rule and reign on the earth. And when you follow Jesus, you discover that Jesus is not weak. Is anyone with me tonight? Just because Jesus died upon the cross does not make him weak. I want to tell you, Jesus is the greatest leader there has ever been. He is the greatest leader there will ever be. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's not going to be the suffering man when he returns. He's going to be the ruling lion of the tribe of Judah. You see, the Israelites could never accept Jesus. Because their view of the Messiah was the Messiah that is to come. They could never accept him as the one that was not establishing his kingdom now. They, they had a revelation of his second coming, but never a revelation of his first coming. They could only ever see him as a lion, but never see him as a lamb. But the problem with the church of today is they only see him as a lamb and do not see him as the lion. I'm preaching better than you're amening right now. Who knows? We need the revelation that he is the lamb, but he is also the lion. And so when we come to communion, we come to the cross. Jesus said many things upon the cross. He said, tell us die, it is finished. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He says, into my hands I commit my spirit. He says to John, this is your mom. And he says to Mary, he says, this is your son. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Seven things he says upon the cross, all with such powerful prophetic meaning for us right now. I love the picture of the cross. And can, can we deal with something just for a moment? The cross was not on a hill outside of Jerusalem. Can I tell you the pictures are wrong? Go, if you've been to Golgotha, Golgotha it, it, it's not this big mountain on the outside overlooking Jerusalem with three crosses hanging there. You know, when they crucified someone, they did it in the midst of the marketplace so that everyone would walk past and see what was taking place. They were a public spectacle to those that were being crucified so that people would not do the same things. But yet, Jesus was an innocent man. And there comes this moment, doesn't there, where there's an opportunity for Jesus to be set free. And Pilate comes before the crowd and he says, okay, you've got Barabbas, the murderer. You've got the guy that has created riots. Or you've got Jesus and as was the custom of the day, one of these men can be released. And if you know the story, you know that when it came to Jesus, they all said, crucify him. And the evil man went free. And the innocent man was crucified. Oh, I don't know if you're getting this tonight. But this was a prophetic picture for our lives today. We are the Barabbas. We are the evil man that gets to go free, that the innocent man would die in our place. And so when he said, Father, forgive them, he was not just saying, forgive those around the front. He was saying, forgive them. You, 
The Jews did not kill Jesus. The Romans did not kill Jesus. You know, the reason why in World War II so many Jews died, the reason was because of the church. Uh, can, can I go here? Is this okay? You know, when Hitler began to say we're going to kill the Jews, they actually looked at the stats of the church and 20% of the church said, yeah, kill the Jews. They killed Jesus. 20% said, no, this is wrong. But the other 60% said, we're not getting involved. I, 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 I need someone to catch a revelation tonight. They decided to stay silent in something that was so important. I, I, I don't want to be part of a generation that when it comes to the crunch, remains silent on something like God's people. They could have risen up. I think if, if the rest of the church had said, you know what, this is not about killing the Jews, then maybe we would not have seen the genocide that we saw during World War II. But the Jews did not kill Jesus. Can I tell you the Jews are the most hated people in the world? Man, you don't, for me, it's proof of God just on its own. The fact that the whole world hates Israel is evidence that God is upon that nation. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for Israel. I, 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 I stand with God's people. Why? Because they are not the reason why Jesus died. Can I tell you the Romans are not the reason why Jesus died? Pontius Pilate had nothing to do with Jesus dying. The reason Jesus died was because of you. You want to blame someone for Jesus dying? You are the reason he died on that cross. Your sins put him there. In fact, he says he laid down his life. The devil did not put him there. I love that. I love the fact that the devil would have had him nailed to the cross. And Jesus is dying, but inside he's thinking, hallelujah. You don't know what's coming, my friends checkmate it was a checkmate moment when he descended into the grave he took his authority back and he rose again with it and so we come to communion not just remembering the lamb but remembering the lion not just remembering Jesus who died but Jesus who rose again and so, Father, tonight, we partake of Jesus' body, the body that was broken for us. By his stripes, we are healed. We thank you for the cross, and we receive it tonight in Jesus' name. You can partake. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for the blood. The blood that cleanses, the blood that washes us. The blood that forgives us. Lord, I pray right now, if any of us need to forgive, that we would just let go of any issue, any issues of heart. You've forgiven us much. How can we hold on to anything else, any offense? We thank you. you, you you've forgiven us so much, we could never... Hold such a small debt against anyone else. Father, we thank you for the blood that washes us tonight. And we receive it now. In Jesus' name. You can partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. His presence is here. This is the covenant between us and God. A blood covenant. 
adopted in his family by his blood. We thank you for it tonight, Jesus. Yeah, flow through this room. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You need healing tonight, you can just reach out and grab it. You need freedom tonight, just grab it in this atmosphere. The cross did it all. The cross did it all. We thank you for it tonight. Amen. I want to show you something really quick from what I preached this morning, just to catch everyone up that... I believe is really key for where we're going in the future. And if, if I can just borrow a f- couple of people. Now, lady, come and join me. Come and join me as well. Uh, Lisa, come and join me. I was preaching this morning on faith. Who knows? The Bible says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. But I want you to really grasp something that I believe is powerful that will help you understand this concept of of faith, of, of how faith works, especially when we're reaching for a miracle. Let me put it like this for you tonight. Faith does not heal you. Faith doesn't heal you. Jesus heals you. Faith is the vehicle by which you obtain the things of the Spirit. Faith is the conduit. Faith is the transport between that realm and this realm. So when Ephesians says that you are saved, it says you are saved by grace through faith. You are not saved by faith. Some people say, well, I'm saved by faith. No, you are not saved by faith. You are saved by grace. Through faith. What does that mean exactly? I want want to show you this way tonight. So Lisa is not saved. Everyone say, ah. It's just an illustration. She is really. (laughs) And my brother here is faith. Now, when she accepts Jesus and says, I believe, what she does is she sends faith to go and grab grace, grab grace, and bring grace to Lisa. Bring bring grace back. Bring, 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 bring. And so faith does not save But faith becomes the channel by which we receive. Let let, let me show you it from a different angle. Come back here. And Lisa Lisa needs healing. She needs some healing in her body. And so in order to obtain the healing, she needs to activate faith. But her faith isn't what is going to heal her. Jesus is going to heal her. But She sends faith, because that's the channel, to go and get her healing and to bring her healing into the natural. Are you with me tonight? And so, so often we place our faith in faith. But our faith is never meant to be the substance of our faith. Our faith is meant to be in the God who can do all things. And so when it says now faith is, thank you guys. It's, yeah, give them a round of applause, my beautiful models. It says that faith is substance. In fact, it's the word hypostasis. This word stasis is a stance. It says substance. It's under a stance. So when you are moving in faith, what are you doing? You are making a stand. And you are standing in faith until faith goes and gets what you need and brings it into your now. Can we be really clear tonight? Acceptance is not faith. 
Many of you, you might be sick and I've had to battle myself with this over this last year of losing my hearing, of coming to acceptance and something inside of me had to say, no, I'm not going to accept my situation. I'm going to stand in faith and wait until my healing comes. This is why when we look at what God's doing in this house, we look, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's already a balcony just there. There's already a balcony just there. There's already a wall down just there. Why? Because faith sees what is unseen and brings it into the now. That's why I've declared, paid in full. Telestai. These, these balconies are paid in full in Jesus' name. I need someone to activate their faith with me just for a moment. What are we doing? We, we, we are engaging in the realm of the Spirit that we begin to see things that aren't as though they are. Now, here's the thing when it comes to faith. Faith always speaks. That's why Jesus said, I say to you, if you have faith in God... If you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea, surely it will be cast into the sea. And then he says, whatever you say, you can have. Now, it doesn't say whatever you pray, whatever you fast. It says, whatever you say, you can have. Faith speaks. You want to know whether you're in faith? Look at what you're saying. That's why we, we, well, we, we don't just throw these things out. We are declaring in the realm of the Spirit what God has already shown us in the realm of the Spirit. Let me give you one last thought and I'm going to stop because some of you heard me preach this this morning. If you want the full message, you're going to have to go to YouTube and watch it. But who knows how faith comes? How do you get faith? Who says by the word? If you say by the word, give me a wave. If you say the word gives you faith. Some of you are here this morning. You, you've learned this lesson. Faith does not come by the word. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Now, again, I need you to get this. Because I, I, I'm tired of people coming to church doing their Sunday morning service and going home and nothing changes in their life. I actually think if Jesus would hear most churches, he would walk in and say, you have little faith, you wicked and unbelieving generation. Why? Because we can sing songs and we can believe for our salvation. But are we actually activating our faith to move mountains? And he says, this is how you're going to get faith. He says, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. What is he talking about? He's saying the Bible in itself does not bring faith. You could sit in a church and listen to the Bible every single week and never move in faith. Uh-oh. In fact, how do I know it? Because there are churches all around the world that preach the Bible, but yet no one ever experiences this realm of faith that I'm talking about. Why? Because you need to hear. What is that? Revelation. Faith comes by hearing. Revelation. Rhema. It doesn't come by logos. It comes by rhema. So, so what does this look like? This looks like when you understand the word and you get to a point where it's not just the word, but it's now revelation. You now have access into your revelation by faith. Oh, I wish I had someone to help me tonight. You want financial breakthrough? You don't just read the scriptures. You need to get those scriptures in your spirit until you get revelation. And once you get revelation, you send faith to go get your finances. You need healing tonight. You know how you get healing? You get in the word until you get revelation. And then you send faith to go bring in. Male. 
I feel faith in the room tonight. I don't know if I've got any believers here tonight, but I, I, I just need someone to activate their faith just for two minutes. I need someone to start speaking some things in the realm of the Spirit. We call for finances right now. We call for healing right now. Malay. Hey. We activate faith tonight. Oh. Marriages are being restored right now in Jesus' name. Sickness is going right now in the name of Jesus. Backslidden children are coming back to Christ right now in this atmosphere. We call them forth. We call them forth in Jesus' name. We speak to every mountain to be cast into the sea. Every hindrance and obstacle goes tonight. Raleigh. Ah. Uh. I want you just to look at the balcony right now, just for a moment. It's just there. If you look by faith, you can see it. I want you to all say with me, paid in full. Paid in full. I want you to look at the other side, the other balcony. Doesn't that balcony look nice? Can you see the people sitting on there, giving praise for what Jesus has done? Someone say it with me. Say, paid in full. Paid in full. Hey. And this is just the beginning. We're going to be given another building. Did you know that? What? What's that? Rhema? Revelation? We're standing. We've had it many prophecies that told us we're going to be given a building. We're going to be given this piece of land in Jesus' name. We're going to be given this house in Jesus' name. Raleigh, I don't know what you need, but, but someone needs to find their ability to speak to their situation. I, I, I'm trying to model something tonight. I, I'm trying to impart some faith in this room. Oh, I feel the anointing. I feel anointing in this room. Hey, activate, activate your faith. You can take your seats. Oh. You've got a muscle on the inside of you. You've been sat around for too long. It's time to start moving things in the spirit. Amen. So who knows what today is? Giving Sunday. And so we're going to sow tonight. Everything you sow in this offering goes into the building, goes into the work that we're going to do. Um, there's another slide where they can pledge as well. Two QR codes, if you can find that one for me. There we go, perfect. And so you can give using the normal way. You can scan the QR code. You can give using the bank details on the screen. Or if you want to make a pledge tonight, you can also scan the make a pledge, and you can sow that way. But I want to encourage you to sow by faith. That's why I shared this again. I, I want there to be faith. If Yeah, if you want to give by card, then come and see Ali. Yes, you can have the card machine there as well. But I want you to sow knowing that your seed produces. Amen. You see, faith always has an action. That's why James said uh, that faith without works is dead. If you really believe he's the God of financial breakthrough, you'll apply his principles and you'll act on them. That's what it is to sow. We know that this is kingdom economy this is how it works and so I just want to pray over your giving as you sow tonight trust the Lord I believe this building will be paid for by July I believe it 
I believe by July, this building will be completely paid for, as in the renovations phase one. I believe we're going to be done. We'll be ready. We'll be lining it up. We're still trying to sort um, the drawings out so we can get it finalized with architects. We had some delays with that. But we're aiming for this work to take place next year. Everything to be lined up this year. Everything to be ready to go, paid for. And then we start the work next year. Who, who's believing with me for that? Come on, come on. And I, and I tell you, when you see it, something's going to rise on the inside of you that says, you know what? That's just the beginning of what we're about to do in this city. I'm believing that we're going to shake the nation with the Spirit of God. I, I'm not content with just building a nice church here. You know, I'm not that kind of pastor. I, I, I want to see the UK shaken with revival. We're going to start taking revival out to the cities. I'm, I'm, I'm even planning something, maybe in June, Pastor Keith, where we, we, we head out to, to Brighton. I'm going to try and get you to come with me, Pastor Keith. And we're going to take Brighton. I don't know if anyone's connected with Brighton or if you're watching online, but we're coming for your city. I believe that the Lord's going to begin to cause us to run up and down the nation carrying revival. Oh... I was saying to the Lord, how do we shake the nation? I don't want to just shake this church. I want to shake the nation. I believe this is the strategy he's given us to be able to do that. Taking cities for Christ. So Father, we just pray right now over the giving tonight. Bless your people. Pour it back out into their lap. Father, I pray that there would be such a move of faith in this place that we begin to see things take place like never before as we activate what's on the inside of us, the, the energeo of God, that we work out faith tonight. And so, Father, I pray you bless this offering. Bless it back to your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you want to come and give, sorry, I'm standing in front of the QR code. You can come and tap, just duck your head a bit, mic on, thank you. <laughs> and you can tap or you can give using the baskets. Come just now. Shura bahala masia bahala makura baye. Rala ma silame kilamando rolamande he. Simando romondo shimande he. Kimande ramanda ha simende kimando romondo. Rala mande silamende kimando. Shura ba ma sende ke. Kikid Raba Shundo Molo Sime Kima Raba Shanda Bababa Sanda Bebe Kiramandehi. We thank you, Holy Ghost. We thank you for what you're going to do in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you give the Lord a clap? Can you just thank him one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I, I don't think my speaker needs much introduction. He is a friend of this house. He is a friend of mine. I like to refer to him as my associate pastor here at Elam Wimbledon, even though he pastors his own church. Will you stand to your feet as he comes? Pastor Keith Bandara, we love you. We appreciate you. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering. Come on, let's, can we just 60 seconds, take up 60 seconds and just say thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just say thank you, Jesus. Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Come on, you could do better than that. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. 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 Lord, you are good and your love endures forever. Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, oh God, you are true to your promises, oh God. So Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Lord, you are mighty. You are mighty. You are sovereign. You are majestic. You are holy. You are lamb. You are the lion of Judah, the alpha and the omega. Lord, the creator of all things the prophet of prophets, the king of kings, the lord of lords, gods of God, O oh Lord. You are that king, my God. Oh, my Lord. Lord, you're the king of the Jews, 
my God. You're the king of my soul, my God. You're the king over my mind. You're the king over my house. You're the king over this territory, my God. Lord, that is who you are, my God. Lord, we give you praise, my God. Oh, my Lord. Lord, Lord, Facebook can't handle what's on your mind, my God. Lord, Google, Lord, cannot search for you, my God. Lord, we can find you in all ways. Lord, that is who you are, my God. Lord, Apple cannot advance you, my God. Lord, because you are all-encompassing, oh God. Lord, that is who you are, my Lord. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Let's take our seats. God is good. If there is ever a man who should be talking about faith, it should be Pastor John. If you sit, with, if you sit down with him, he will raise your level of faith. You know, I had the privilege, me and my wife had the privilege of going uh, to dinner with Mama P and uh, Pastor John, and it was amazing. Um, and in my heart, I had something that I wanted to do. But as he was speaking, not today, that time when we went for dinner, uh, it kind of confirmed what I was doing. As a church, a City of Lights, we're looking to expand and look for a building. God's been good to us since we've started, and we're doing um, all sorts of stuff to try and, um, you know, break through in our finances. So as a seed offering, as a church, John, we will put something, and I've already texted uh, our finance guy to put something in the account, but it is a seed offering for, for you and for the building. As you have seen it, you declare it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I put this on good ground. You know, as a farmer, you don't put seed on bad grounds. Yeah? So, so, so you have to understand when you are planting seed, when you are trying to ask God for a harvest, you have to learn where to actually throw your seed. And sometimes we throw seeds in the wrong ground. Uh, and hence, we get frustrated when there is no growth. And so I do this prophetically, and I want to do this as a church, and I've already spoken uh, to our finance, um, I, do, I don't know what you call it, finance minister, maybe it sounds quite good. Uh, uh, but we will put it in the account, and I pray that God will bless uh, the work that is going on here and the building. I see the, uh, I see the balcony, I see the balcony, and we declare it. In Jesus' name, amen. But at the same time, I pray that you pray for us as City of Lights, that God will open up doors um, um, and his favor upon us financially and uh, building-wise. So we thank God for that, amen? amen? Amen. So let me get that out of the way. I uh, know, John, come up. You can pray for me now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, I want to just take this opportunity. Will you stretch out your hand? Yeah, I'm feeling faith in the room, so I'm like, you, we, we can't take a moment like this. Uh, I, 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 I don't actually want to pray, I just want to speak it. Yeah. You know, I feel we just need to declare some things in the realm of the Spirit. And so right now, we declare over this church in the name of Jesus, we declare a building to come. We declare a building to come over Pastor Keith and his ministry. Right now, I pray supernaturally, give him a building in the name of Jesus. We call it forth. We call it into the realm of natural. We pray right now, Lord, that you just open windows of heaven. We declare financial abundance over his ministry ministry, that every need be met in Jesus' name. I pray every door that he needs to open would open. And Lord, I declare in this, this season of the heaps that between now and July, there'd be supernatural breakthrough over the city of lights that they would declare in these next four months, surely this is the hand of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. This, this evening, I want to teach you. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to teach you. Let's turn quickly to the book of Daniel. Let's go quickly to the book of Daniel. Um, and I want to um, teach you some stuff from here that is going to open up your mind. And maybe you read this, but you haven't actually thought about it, okay? Uh, and so I want to open up uh, this talk with you so that you understand what is happening when you engage in the prophetic 
and you engage in prayer and what happens in the unseen realm. Okay? So when we understand what is going on in the unseen, you guys are looking at me like, okay, yeah, I'm excited. But I wanted to know, um, I wanted to know that prayer is not just a communication. It is actually your, your, um, your rules of engagement in this kingdom to bring about the heavenly kingdom. But I'm going to show you through scripture that I'm not just preaching it, but you can actually see it happening. Okay? So I'm going to teach you something that I wanted to know that if God has promised you something, it's not a call for us to get excited, get happy, get excited, but it's a call for deeper intercession. So if you are not a prayerful person, you will struggle to see the fruition of your prophetic word because a prophetic word that comes over our lives and over your life and the church's life is actually God is calling you into a deeper level of intercession. So you cannot run after the prophetic without being a person of prayer. So I'm going to teach you from the book of Daniel and kind of show you what happens when you pray. Okay, tell your neighbor, what does happen when you pray? And in the scriptures, you see different examples of prayer. You see different examples of prayer and different activations of prayer and different dimensions of prayer. What I'm about to show you is a dimension which moves nations, which removes kings and places kings in positions. But you have to understand the prophetic word coupled with your level and the ability to pray that prophetic word but also very important you need to understand the season in which you are in because if you don't understand the season your prayers will go amiss and so when we begin to under okay you guys with me yes. yeah okay so 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 just be with me so you have to understand the season in order to act pray a certain prayer for that thing to come to pass, right? And so you are not only a soldier, you're also a farmer. The book of Timothy describes us as soldiers who doesn't get involved in civilian affairs. It describes us as athletes who, who trains to win a victor's crown. And then it also describes us as farmers, who knows how to plant seed. So in order to understand season, you have to be a master farmer. Amen. You know, for you guys who grew up in the city, this might be a hard concept for you to take because the Bible is full of agricultural language. Yeah. And so in order to understand, to understand the season, you need to know when to plant the seed, yeah. how to wait, and when to harvest. If you're not, if you don't carry the anointing of a farmer, you'll get frustrated in the seasons of waiting. Are, are you? Because waiting is a character of a, a farmer. He understands that if he farms, if he puts the seed in now, the rain comes. And when the rain comes, there will be a season where the harvest will come. It's not like when it comes, he knows that there's going to be a harvest that's going to come. And so a farmer understands when to plant the seed, how long to wait for it, and then learn when to go out to harvest the seed. Do you see the three dimension as a farmer? Yeah. Know when to plant, know how to wait. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount upon the wings like eagles. And then you come to the season of harvest. The problem is, is that we've been taught to plant the seed and get ready for the harvest. But your waiting could be 10 years. David was anointed, but he waited 13 years. 13 years before he became the king of Israel. Are you, are you guys with me, yeah? So the book of Daniel, let's read this, okay? Let's go. Book of Daniel chapter 9. Book of Daniel chapter 9. It says this. Verse 1, 
So I'm teaching you that you had the prophetic word and how Daniel managed to bring that prophetic word into fruition and what happens in the atmosphere. So in the first year of Darius, the son of um, Archerus, of, uh, Arche you know, you, when you don't know how to pronounce it, you've just got to say it like, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. And you'll just believe me, that's how you, and you're going to go the rest of your life just saying it like I said it. Okay? In the first year of Darius, the son of Archerus, by the descent of a uh, Mede, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans in the first year of his reign, this is Daniel now, I, Daniel, everyone say, I, Daniel, I, Daniel. perceived in the books of the numbers of number of years that according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end of the desolation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. I'm going to stop there for a bit. It's a bit confusing, right? Basically, he's saying that he was reading the scriptures, namely the book of Jeremiah, and he saw a word in Jeremiah that was prophesied that the children of Israel will go into captivity for their, for their disobedience. And then after 70 years, they will be released. Okay, so where do you find that scripture? I'm going to give that scripture to you. So you write it down. It's in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11 to 12. The prophecy was written sometime from 626 to about 586 BC and was not fulfilled till later on, okay? So it says, this whole country will become a desolate wasteland and these nations will serve the kings of Babylon for how long? 70 years, 70 years. But when the 70 years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation, the land of the Babylonians for their guilt, declares the Lord, and will make it desolate forever. So a prophetic word had already come to the children of Israel saying, because of your disobedience, you're going to be taken into captivity, but after 70 years, I'm going to release you. Amen? Amen. This is in Jeremiah. You know how amazing the scriptures are? That something that was spoken and written in a different book is now being fulfilled in the book of Daniel. If you don't believe me, you can go to the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. Okay? It says, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, we're going to be reading a lot of scriptures because I want to see how God works intricately, okay? In the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the law spoken by, is it up here? Yeah, yeah Ezra 1, yeah. Spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. This is the book of Ezra. Because when the children of Israel came out of the Babylonian kingdom, they came in three parties. Nehemiah was involved in building, Jeru building the walls. That was one. Then you had Ezra who was responsible for bringing ref reformation through the word. And then you had Daniel who established the what happened in the spirit, which we're going to go into in a minute. But they came out in three parts, okay? I'm, I'm teaching you, is that okay? So tell your neighbor, Pastor Key's teaching today. So get your notebooks out and write it down. Because I'm trying to show you that, that, that King Cyrus is not there by accident. It's act he was actually orchestrated to be on the throne because that is the king that had to be on the throne to release king, the, the children of Israel. Yeah. If you don't believe me, let's go to Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1. This is, uh, uh, Isaiah was, um, they call him the, um, the eagle eye prophet. Okay, the eagle eye prophet. You know, Isaiah prophesied the sphere of the earth. Um, he prophesied the sphere of the earth. Before science came along, he said the world was, what's a sphere? He didn't have no science. He prophesied it. It's in the scriptures. It's in the scriptures. He called him the eagle-eyed prophet. Sorry if there's any flat earth. Um, um, <laughs> okay, we don't, don't confess, please. Okay? Okay. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. We're just sitting around the table and learning. Is that okay, yeah? Okay. Okay. Um, Isaiah chapter 45, if you read it, it was written maybe 700, year, 700 BC, okay? It says this. 
Uh, this is what the Lord says to his anointed. And who is his anointed? To Cyrus. Cyrus wasn't even born. This is Isaiah prophesying about a king that wasn't even born. That's why you need faith. You can't see it, but you prophesy it. Because you see it. Do you know we, there's a parallel world, right? And in this parallel world, the world that is above us are already in iPhone 26. <laughs> Maybe it's gone beyond the iPhone 12. I'm just using it metaphorically. We're on iPhone 15. In other words, this realm is catching up with the parallel world. And so what you have to do is to become people who walk in the spirit because the spirit is in line with the parallel world, but your flesh is catching up. And so the Bible teaches us to walk in the spirit so that we walk in step with the spiritual, right? And so when you operate in the flesh, you will always be left behind. And so you'll be making decisions, you'll be causing business, you'll be making business decisions, you'll be, if you're in trading, you'll be making poor trading, you'll be doing all sorts of stuff according to the flesh, but the Bible teaches us to walk in the spirit because the, the spirit is lined up with the parallel world, and so if it's iPhone 26, that's why those who are visionaries are already ahead, because they've seen it in the spirit. If you know the story of Walt Disney, have you heard about the story of Walt Disney? He, 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 he had a dream to build Walt Disney. And the Bible, uh, not the Bible, the Bible doesn't say that. It shows I'm a preacher. So no, <laughs> the Bible doesn't say that. Okay. So he had this dream about Walt Dis uh, building a Walt Disneyland. And so he began to build Disneyland. But he died before the Disneyland was completed. And so on the opening day, his wife was sitting there. And the reporter came to him and said to Walt Disney, uh, to what Mrs. Disney, said, um, do you wish that your husband can see this? She turned around to the reporter and said, he saw this before you saw it. You're seeing what he saw 20 years ago in reality. Do you see how visionaries are actually 20, 30 years ahead in the unseen realm already? You don't need to be spiritual. You just, first of all, need to be a visionary and be able to do that to, in order to function, right? And so we got Isaiah, who's now prophesying about a man who is not even born yet. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take a hold to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor to open doors before him so the gates will not be shut. In other words, God was going to use Cyrus to bring about the children of Israel out of the nation of Babylon. You read that in Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 where King Cyrus is now on the throne. He was the fourth king. So before King Cyrus, it was a king called Darius. Before King Darius, it was a king called Nebuchadnezzar II. And before him, it was Nebuchadnezzar I. The second one, I think it was called Belshazzar, um, something like that. Um, so uh, Daniel was under four different kings. He came to the Babylonian kingdom when he was a kid, but he was under four different kings in the nation of Babylon. But guess what? The guy flourished under all four kings. He was in the palace because of who he was. He was distinguished. He was, he was excellent. The Bible says that he learned the ways of the Chaldeans. He le the Bible says, if you read the whole book, if there is a character that I love in the Bible, if you say, Keith, if you interview me and you say, who's your favorite character in the Bible? I would outright say it's Daniel. Because I've, I, I believe that in order to function in society right now, you need to be like Daniel. Because Daniel flourished in a school where there was astrologers and magicians and witches. Nothing against homeschooling. Because you're scared what the teachers are teaching them. Can I tell you, Daniel, it says in the book of Daniel, he learned... 
in the midst of witches, astrologers, magicians, all, all sorts of madness. The ways of Chaldeans. And my guy flourished. Sorry, listen, I know this is going on YouTube. If you're homeschooling, carry on doing it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying there is a wisdom. Carry on doing it, but there's a wisdom in learning the ways because it's our jobs as parents to teach our kids the ways of the Lord. So that even if there was a witch and a magician, he knows who he is. When the enemy couldn't attack Daniel, you know what they did? They tried to attack the pattern. The enemy knew he prayed three times a day. His enemies knew he prayed three times a day. They couldn't, get, because the kings had favor over Daniel. Like when they needed something, they called Daniel to come and give them an interpretation of dreams. And these um, noblemen wanted to bring Daniel down because they saw so much favor on him. And so the only thing they can work out is say, you know what, we know this guy prays three times a day. So let's put a law in place that at a certain time we will make a sound. And when that sound comes, they have to bow down. And if they don't bow down, they'll be thrown into the fire. Yeah, yeah? Uh, sorry, the, 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 the lion. Yeah, and, and so they, they, they tricked the king and because the king loved um, um, Daniel. And made him sign this edict. And they did it. And guess what? Daniel was praying when the alarm was going off. Because if the enemy can't kill you, he will try and attack your pattern. He will try and make you stop praying if he knows he can't get to you. Because it's your prayer that's keeping him in the palace. So you got Nebuchadnezzar, you got Belshazzar, you got Darius, and you got all these kings who have witches and astrologers and magicians, and they're seeing all sorts of stuff, and he flourished in the course of the kings. Why? Because he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. This is why I love Daniel, because when the time came, he didn't do salamandering and like running up and down, oh, we need a breakthrough quickly. He just carried on with his pattern. He just prayed at... This time, this time, three times a day. And it wasn't like, let's call the church to a fast. Let No, he just carried on with his pattern. So when you have a discipline of prayer, you won't panic. Why? Because you know you're going to go into the room to meet with God. And when you have a pattern with God, do you know God will meet you there? So if you say to God, I'm going to pray at six in the morning... But over time, you don't turn up. That's why, you know, in our church, I say this because I'm proud of, uh, uh, I'm saying it in a good way. You know, proud is not good, right? <laughs> our church has been praying for 600 days consecutively. But I just want people to turn up. Even if we don't see a breakthrough, you have to understand the power of persistence. Because all the prayers that you've been praying, one day is going to come to a place where it needs to come to fruition. Right? And so we got, we got Daniel here now in the first year of Darius. Are you guys with me, right? Do you see you have a prophetic word in Jeremiah where after 70 years you're going to get released, right? And then you have Cyrus who is ready to come onto the throne, but he can't. Why? Because there's King Darius on the throne. He has to be removed so that Cyrus could be involved in releasing the children of Israel. Okay? And so now, Daniel began to understand the prophetic word. And the Bible says that he began to pray. He says, um, the years that according to the word of the Lord, Jeremiah the prophet must pass by. Then I turned my face to the Lord, seeking him by prayer and, and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So he began to intercede. And so we know the story. After 70 years, the children of Israel got released, right? But there's another story I have to tell you to tell you the power of your prayer and intercession when it comes to prophetic word. Because Abraham was also given a prophetic word that the children of his children will go into Israel for 400 years. Sorry, into Egypt for 400 years. And after 400 years, the Bible says the Lord will release them out of the land of Egypt. 
But when you do the time, uh, the time scale, the children of Israel was actually released on the 431 days. Sorry, 431 years. Not on 400, 400 years that God promised. So is God wrong? Okay, so in the 390th year, on the 390th year, when God appeared um, and getting um, Moses ready, Moses saw the, 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 the affliction that Egyptians were putting on the children of Israel, and he took it upon himself to bring freedom to the children of Israel. And what did he do? He murdered and killed an Egyptian which delayed what was supposed to happen. And then on the 390th year, he ran out. For how long? 40 years. For 40 years. So 40 years, God was preparing him in the wilderness when he had a plan to prepare him for 10 years. So some of us have sabotaged the prophetic word because we have been like Hagar and not Sarah. Where we've taken the promise of God and we've tried to activate it. We've tried to become justice fighters. We've tried to do all sorts of stuff and we've come out of line and we have already now delayed what God wanted us to, to be used as preparation. That 10 years, I knew God was, I, I, not I knew, I have an idea that God wanted him to go to a place of intercession. Because it would take 10 years to break through that realms in the spirit to release the children of Israel. And then he had to take him out 40 years to prepare him and then bring him back in. And there was a delay. It will surely come to pass, but there was a delay because Moses decided to take it upon himself. When there is no intercession, the prophetic word just lingers. It just lingers. So let's come back to Daniel. Daniel wasn't like that. Daniel understood and the Bible says he began to pray. He began to pray. Let's go to chapter 10, verse 10. So now, in the first, verse 1 says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel who was named Belshazzar, and the word was true, and it was a great conflict, and he understood the word and understanding of the vision. Now everything is coming into place, and is nearly closed. And the Bible says this, and behold, so in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for how many weeks? Three weeks. I ate no del delicacies, no meat or wine, entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for full three weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, I lifted up my eyes and then he saw this vision that came along. I want to tell you this 21 days of fasting we call Daniel fasting. It's not the fasting that some of us get involved in. If you're still shining, you're not fasting like Daniel. I look at some of these Daniel fasts and like they're showing you they're more concerned about the diet then the prayer. <laughs> I've seen so many Daniel fasts where the focus is on these are the meals that you can have. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Praise the Lord. But it's not about the meal. It, it's, not about, it's not about not eating meat or anything. Like forget how you're going to cook for lunch. You know, you're, you're, you're preparing in your head during the morning what you're going to have for lunch. And after that, you're preparing your dinner, doing that, and you think, you're not even sacrificing. This is not what Daniel is talking about. This is not what Daniel is talking about. Okay? So throw the meal plan away. So listen to this. This is where I want to teach you what is going on now. Now, 70th years is coming. He has to increase. So he begins to pray. 21 days. Verse 10 says this. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel. Everyone say, he said to me. He said, O Daniel, man greatly loved. Say, man greatly loved. 
tell your neighbor you're greatly loved. Come on, make him smile. God loves you guys. Oh, Daniel, man greatly loved, understanding the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For now I have been sent to you. I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, fear not. Everyone say, fear not. Fear not. Daniel, for from the first day, what day? Fear. From the what day? What day? What day? How many days did it take to come to fruition? 21 days. Guys, flow with me. Flow with me. We just, you're not listening, are you? I tell your neighbor, you're not listening. You're not listening. You're not listening. For three weeks, the Bible says he was mourning. 21 days. This is the 21st day he's having a conversation. And so the angel turns around and says, fear not, Daniel, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, your words have been heard. Just because you haven't got an answer yet, I want to tell you, it doesn't mean God did not hear you. The angel came, um, John, and said to um, Daniel, you're greatly loved. On the first day you sent your request, we heard your prayer. Tell your neighbor, he's heard your prayer. The problem with us is that we don't have the patience. The problem with us is that we don't know how to wait. The problem with us is that we don't know the power of persistence. The problem with us is that we don't understand the power uh, of consistency because prayer is not a physical act, it is a spiritual act. And so because it is a spiritual act, there are entities that are in operation that you don't understand. And because you don't understand them, you don't engage in the protocols of heaven that allows the answer which they heard on the first day, but it took 21 days to come to you. Are you with me? Yeah. So fear not, Daniel. Tell your neighbor, this is good. Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before God, your words have been heard and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for how many days? Okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm going somewhere. So... They heard the prayer on the first day. But there is a spirit that blocked the answer from coming. And the name of that spirit was a principality. And the name of that principality was the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia. It says here, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. So there was a battle that was going on in the heavenly realms while you were praying. Why? Because when the prophetic gets attached to prayer, all of the spirit realm begins to wake up because now it's time for the seed to come to pass. And so the enemy doesn't want the seed to come to pass. So there is a realm that you cannot see that is fully engaged while you are going, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And you're shalomandering and you're praying. There is... There is war going on over there. And that's why you should never stop. Because your prayer releases angelic activities that is carrying the word from heaven and bringing it down. But there is a prince of Persia that withstood the angel that brought the messages. And listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. The, king, the, the, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. But listen, but Michael, everyone say Michael. Michael. <laughs> he said, have you seen this before? Yeah. Uh, so I'm explaining it now to you, right? Do you understand this? So then, then, then something happens because my guy couldn't withstand the prince of Persia. So then God is like, hold on a minute. I sent the answer a while ago. What's going on? What's going on? Listen, I'm nearly 40 years old. I just use that. You know, I'm just trying to be, yeah, I'm trying to hold on to my youth. All right? <laughs> the young adults of my church, they just laugh at me all the time. 
They call me Uncle Keith now. I didn't know there was a transition like that. You know how hard that hits me when they say Uncle Keith. Jeez. So, so but Michael, one of the chief princes, princes, came to help me. For I was left there with the kings of Persia. And came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days for the vision is for days yet to come. Church, there are angelic forces Daniel is talking about that is moving on your... This is why you guys need to learn to pray. Like when you pray, it's not your words just going to God. He releases the messengers to come. Now, heaven, God doesn't violate his rules. He doesn't violate positions. So there are different angels in scripture. I, I taught my church about angels and different types of angels and different levels of angels. And angels don't step out of line. The only angel that stepped out of line was Lucifer. Lucifer. Everyone, don't be scared, everyone. Lucifer. Lucifer. So Lucifer was actually an angel who positionally was higher than Michael and Gabriel because he was in the presence of God. When Michael came face to face with Lucifer, what did, what did Michael say to him? The Lord rebuke you. Because there was an authority that was higher than Michael himself. The prince of Persia, in other words, prince, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, workers of darkness, and what? Principalities, the highest level. Principalities are organized to govern regions. So when you had the, the are, you, are, you, are you with me? Okay, so let me explain this. Can I borrow, um, bro, can you come up for me, please? Yeah, let me, let me yeah, come, you come. So let's use him as, uh, no. Right, can I have, bro, can you just come and just stand here, right? So let's just say this is Daniel. He's now understood the word that has come to pass. So now he goes down on your knees, and he begins to pray for 21 days, right? He begins to pray, and this prayer now goes to God, right? And can I have an angel? Can I borrow you? You're an angel. You look like an angel, so come. <laughs> and I need, um, uh, yeah, come. Come up, darling, it's fine. I want a Michael. Come, uh, Roshan, come. I'll use my brother as well. Yeah. Give it up for my brother. He's always talking about angels to me, you know. Oh, brother, what about this angel and that angel? So come, bro. Uh, so you got God here. You got Gabriel, who is in charge of bringing the message. She cannot move away from that. That's why she cannot war with, with the prince of Persia, because her functioning is not warring. Her functioning is to bring the, the answer, yeah? So when she comes in contact, come, you come. So you're Michael. I need a prince of Persia. <laughs> who's who's going to be, you know, actually, Raj, I use you, come, bro. This is a prince of Persia. He's a good lad. He's a good lad. <laughs> He's a prince of Persia. Yay, give it up. Yay. I'm giving you a visual representation. I'm giving you a visual. Actually, bro, can you go on that second stairs? Yeah, just stand there. I'm giving you a visual representation. Now, I need, I need King Darius. Bro, can I use you as King Darius? Okay, so this is King Darius. And bro, can you just stand over here or sit on the stage here? Sit on the stage. And I need a King Cyrus. Who's the King Cyrus? Um, uh, Mackay, can you come? I'll use my son. This is King Cyrus. Because he's the chosen one. I had to use my son, all right? So he's King Cyrus. The thing is, you stand, uh, you stand here. Stand here, that's it. You stand here. Now, what's going on is, this is prayer, guys, okay? This is a visual representation. What's going on is this is what you see with your eyes. This is everything that you cannot see in the unseen realm that is going on. Daniel is reading the Bible and he sees the prophetic word in Jeremiah. 
the prince of Persia for the last 70 years, this principality has been controlling Darius and Nebuchadnezzar and all the, all the kings, all the four kings like a puppet. They're on the throne, but prince of Persia is actually the one in control of the Babylonian kingdom. And the prince of Persia has put the children of Israel in captivity. 70 years is coming to pass. Now you're controlling Darius. He's on the throne. And while he's on the throne, he's doing everything to keep. And then he begins to pray. And these words go to, uh, to God. And say, yeah. And then he sends Michael. Sorry, um, Gabriel. And so Gabriel now is going down to bring to fruition. And then Prince of Persia says, hold on, why is he going with the answer? He says, hold on a minute, stop. Stop, bro, block. Block and start to fight. Start to fight. Yeah, and then grab her. Grab her and then sh she gets captured by the Prince of Persia because he doesn't have that authority to defeat. And so now God is there, and this is me paraphrasing everything. So don't jump to conclusion. I'm making up the Bible. He's paraphrasing. He said, hold on a minute. Why is Daniel still praying? I sent the answer on the first day. So, so Gabriel, um, um, the, the, the angel that's taking the message is stuck in between. He said, yo, Michael, this is your job. He goes, and then he begins to war against the Prince of Persia. Whoa, whoa, yeah. <laughs> Right? And then while he's warring against, his hands are cut off from Darius. And Prince um, Cyrus' soul that was held up in the, in the realms of the spirit is released into Cyrus. And he becomes now the king over Babylon. And then uh, Gabriel, the message I'm going to call you, you go and go to Daniel. Jump out. He, she gets released because Michael comes along, defeats the Prince of Persia. You're gone, bro. You can go and sit down. And Darius is no longer in the picture. Now everything is set in place. Cyrus comes. He takes the throne. God's in control. Michael's like done his job. He goes back to God in the realms of the spirit. And now he come, she comes and gives Daniel the message that what you have been praying for has now come to pass. But on the first day you sent it, I heard it do you see the visual representation and all you are doing is just praying church thank you guys let's take your seats give them a round of applause and all you're doing is just praying there are prophetic words that are yet to come to pass in your house there are generational words that have been spoken to your parents, that have been spoken to your grandparents, and they are held up in the realms of the spirit because there hasn't been a man or a woman who prayed it into your family. I'm here to tell you and remind you that your fight is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and workers or forces. This is not some cute thing that you do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. No. These are things that you understand the word and you begin to pray the word. Prayer no longer becomes about what you want. Prayer now becomes about engaging spiritual stuff into coming to reality. And when that begins to happen, you need to understand, for seek ye the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you're praying about a car, if you're praying about a house, if you're praying about a financial breakthrough, you still misunderstood the power of prayer. Because when you begin to seek righteousness which is attached to his word and you begin to say uh listen the, you know the bible you know the bible says he grants you your heart's desire those who delight in the lord will the lord will grant your heart's desire amen amen when you quote this scripture what most christians do is the lord grants me my heart's desire you don't say the first part which is what those who delight in the Lord, the Lord will grant their hearts desire. Do you know why? Because when you delight in the Lord, your soul, your heart, your mind gets aligned with His desire. And so when you are praying for a husband or a wife, which is your desire, and you're not getting, because it's your will, 
not God's will. That's why Jesus can be in the garden and say to his father, not my will, but let your will be done because he delighted in his father's will. And so he began to pray according to the word. You don't pray according to a dream that you had last night. You don't pray according to the the prophet that came and gave. No, you pray according to the word. And when you begin to gain understanding of the word, it changes the way that you pray. You pray according to the promise that God, I am the head and not the tail. When, your, when, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says he will raise up a standard. I'm asking myself, where are the intercessors? Where are the prayer warriors? And I'm not talking about your mom. I'm not talking about your grandma. Men, where are the prayer men? Because, because, because he's a prayer man. I want to tell you, you know, the days are gone where my mom was a prayer warrior. Men, I want to raise a generation where you, my sons will say my dad was a prayer man. <laughs> mom, keep praying. That is great. But do you know, positionally, men, you are the priest of the house. And one of the functions of a priest is to offer up incense, bef- not your wife. You are out of order when you're relying on your wife's prayer, but you are a man of God. Because you have to learn as a man to pray. So all the men, I'm just telling you, your wife might be a prayer warrior and that's great. She's keeping you afloat. But if you want to fly, you better get down on your knees. You better get down on your knees because God is raising up men in this season who are, who are now becoming the prayer warriors for the next generation. Why? Because the enemy is trying to take men's identity away from them. And the only way we can beat the spirit of Jezebel is understanding the prophetic and understanding our priestly positions. Do you know that there are three functions that we have which Jesus operated in and old time prophets? What are they? Prophets, priests, and kings. And the thing about this is that We all want to operate as kings. We do. We want to decree. I decree in the name of Jesus uh, that I'm the head and not the tail. You know, I decree that finance will flow over me. I declare over my region that the enemy will move out the way. You know, all of these kind of stuff. Because being a king is kind of, it's powerful. Yeah, it's powerful. And then you have the prophet. You know, everybody loves a prophet. Yeah, everybody loves a prophet. And the prophets are good. And this is a season for the prophets. And so we all run after the prophetic. And we want to give a prophetic word. How do I hear the voice of God? I want to give this prophetic word. I want to do this. I want to do this. But the most neglected position and the most important, I think one of the most important positions in out of these three functions is the function of a priest because until you learn to sacrifice as a priest you cannot operate in the anointing of a king you can't you have to learn to get on your knees so you can elevate in the authority of a king and a prophet and the only people that you saw do this was people like Samuel and David who can prophesy who was a prophet he was a priest and they were known as judges and kings because they learn how to be a priest a priest and so men you are priests and the functions of priests are to bring sacrifices sacrifices the bible talks about sacrifices with our time sacrifices with praise sacrifices um, do not be conformed to this world but offer your bodies a living sacrifice that is a priestly function the bible talks about it from genesis to revelation and this is the most neglected one why because it's the most sacrificial one it's the most structured official one. We sang this uh, song, the train of his robe fills the temple. Do you understand what that means? 
when a king's, the size of a king's robe determines the authority of his kingdom. So when you go to a king, uh, you'll see it even in the modern world, they'll have a robe. The bigger the robe, the more empires they have. So when the Isaiah describes the throne of his, uh, sorry, the, um, the train of his robes fills the temple, it means that he, incom- he, he was rule over the universe. There was no space to contain his robe. Why? Because the length of his robe was a presentation of his authority. And so when he saw this vision, he saw a robe, but it filled the temple. Because he's the king of kings and the lord of laws. And so we want this authority, but can you die? Can you die? And so now we need to understand that when you have these prophetic words and you begin to read this word and to understand this word, this word will begin to inform your prayer life. And when this word begins to inform your prayer life, it will begin to activate angelic forces in the realms of the spirit that begins to move for you. And you don't understand this because sometimes you don't need to lay hands on your grandmother or your uncle in Jamaica. You can just pray from the United Kingdom in Wimbledon and it will fly all the way to Jamaica where your uncle has a cancerous cell and you come in Psalm 107 the Bible says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction you could I can be in the UK but send the word of God to Sri Lanka and my uncle get healed why because I sent his word and it healed them and delivered them it doesn't need a first class flight The word of God doesn't need a passport. The word of God doesn't need a visa. The word of God needs you to believe in his word and begin to pray the word. And he, I am the Lord that healed thee. Yes, you got a sick brother in another country, in another place. You got someone in need. We don't need to be there physically because the word is spirit. And because the word is spirit, you begin to pray and pray and pray. And you send that word of healing so that it begins to come into fruition. And so when John says that he sees the balcony that he sees it being paid in full you need to understand there was a prophetic word that was released over this house that you will get these places and so either you believe him and begin to get on your knees and pray with him for it or you can just move out the way and let John just do it and begin to pray and there are angelic forces that are moving in the realms of the spirit because you are praying it is attached to a word it is attached to a word Uh, a church are you getting this this is why prayer is not boring you cannot be a believer and say prayer is boring no 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 when you understand what is going on you'll be like i'm on this all the time you know, you guys, you know, you, got, you watch the Troy or you watch 300 or you watch all of these battles and you get excited inside. But can I tell you, when you're praying, that is what's happening in the realms of the spirit. There are things that are being put in place, orchestrated, so things can come to pass. Things can come to pass. There are words that are lingering over your life. You just haven't prayed it through. It's not because the prophet was wrong. It's because you don't like praying. Some of us have opened our mouths and said, that's a false prophet or that prophetic word. They're just saying it. But what if you actually haven't prayed? And so now you're living in disappointment and frustration because those words that the prophets have spoken over your life hasn't happened. Why? Because you're a prayerless believer. Are you with me? We cannot be a Christian and prayerless. We can't. We can't. We can't. I can't be a preacher up here and not pray. You can't be a worship leader and not pray. You can't be the worst. You you, You have to pray because there is a movement that happens that worship can't do. Otherwise, we'll read Daniel singing... 
I don't know what songs are there. <laughs> oh, my soul. Yes, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Daniel wasn't doing that. Daniel was distinguished. He understood the word and he just prayed. He just prayed. And he moved nations. He governed nations through prayer. My guy removed a king so that he could put sight. And nobody knew he was doing that from his... You think somebody's on the throne because you gave them the vote. God establishes kingdoms. And you individually begin to understand the season as a farmer. Now begin to pray that you can put the right person on the throne. So are you waiting from, for a promise to break through in your life? Can I say to you, it's time to pray. Can I say to you, when John says he sees the balconies, he sees it paid in full. He's not just talking, talking like, like, like motivational talks. No. The, these are things you have to understand in the spirit. When a leader gives a word, the house must follow that word and pray it into being because it shall surely come to pass because things of the spirit can, can only be accessed through faith Amen. you heard this faith is the ability so 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 it says do not walk by sight but walk by so in order to operate in faith you have to learn to close your eyes People will be saying, I'm a blind man walking, but I'm walking in the spirit. And I'm beginning to see things in the spirit that I can't see in the physical. But in order to walk by faith, you have to learn to close your eyes. And if you don't learn to close your eyes, you will find it hard to walk by faith. When the news tells you there is a recession, you have to close your eyes and begin to activate your faith and begin to see what's happening in the realms of the spirit because the realms of the spirit is light years ahead. And so in order to see what the end will be, you have to understand what's happening up there. Everything that is happening here is already happened up there. And if Jesus has already written the end of the Bible, which says that we are going to have eternal life, it means everything's going to be okay. You know, I've been dealing with so many people, going with so many things. You know what gives me the greatest comfort? Is that God knew it was going to happen, and he's not surprised by what you're going through. You might be surprised by what you're going through, but God isn't surprised, and I find comfort in the ability to know that God is not surprised with that which took you by surprise. Do, do, uh, you know how powerful that is? That you can just sit down and say, you know what, this didn't surprise my dad. So let me just take a breather. Let me collect myself. Let me go into the word and just remind myself who I am. And I begin to pray this word over my life to know I'm going through depression, but I know that he who began a good work in me will bring it to completion. I just lost my business, but I know the Bible says that he who began a good work in me will bring it to completion. I'm being attacked left, right and center, but I know the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against it. I know when people tell me you are the, you, you're not the head and you're, you, 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 you're last, I know the Bible says that I will make you first. I, I know you're sick in your body, but I know the Bible says that I am the Lord, I'm the, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. You have to remind yourself that God is not surprised. Come on, let's stand to our feet. I want you to start remembering 
the prophetic words over your life that hasn't been fulfilled and you are frustrated. I sense frustration in the atmosphere because you come to church, but you're like, Lord, it's the same thing over and over again. And, 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 and Lord, I need a change to come into my life. I want you to remember now. I want you to practice remembering those prophetic words. This is a prophetic house. And I know you have, you have been given prophetic words. And you're living in frustration. You're living in disappointment. You're living in anger. You're even living in bitterness. And it's now time to activate your spirit, man. And say, Lord, this will surely come to pass. Come on. Begin to pray. Start. Begin to remember. Come and begin to remember. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on. Come on, you might be going through something. Maybe there is a financial attack. Maybe there's an attack on your health. But in the, in the, in the constitution, in, in the bylaws of heaven, in Isaiah, um, the, the, the section, Isaiah subsection 54, verse 7 says this. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is the word that you need to pray right now. I don't know what sort of attack you're going through in your house. You say, I disarm all weapons. The enemy has formed for me against my family, against my children. I disarm every weapon that has been established in my bloodline, in my ancestral line, in my generation, in the name of Jesus. Because according to Isaiah, which is the word of God, Lord, I begin to pray that promise. Come on, open up your mouth. I know there's attacks that you're attacked in your mind, you're attacked in your emotion, you're attacked in your your soul you're attacked in your in your in your health you need to begin to pray you need to begin to say according to Isaiah no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper and you say I disarm all weapons the enemy has fashioned or will try to form against me and my family to be gone in come on open up your mouth these are biblical prayers you're praying Isaiah chapter 45, I disarm the enemy, I disarm the enemy, come on. Hey, Amando Basi and the enemy of Alonda Rakashi Tekia Bako, Ramandele Boko, she and the Lord, I disarm every weapon, Lord, that has come from an ancestral bloodline in this room, my God. Lord, come on, come on, I know you're under attack, but you've got to say, you've got to say according to his word. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. I'm speaking against weapons uh, that has been fashioned to your likeness. Uh, give me five minutes. I'm just going to lead you in prayer. I'm just going to lead you. No weapons formed against me shall prosper. That's the word you're standing on right now. Isaiah chapter 54. Say, Lord, according to Isaiah chapter 54... No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment. Every spirit of accusation that is over you. There are people that are speaking against you. There are people and, and managers and jobs and friends that are saying things in secret. That is called... Come on. Accusation. Accusation be broken. Accusation the spirit of the accuser in the room right now that says you're not good enough that says you're not good enough who said you were naked who said you were not good enough who said you're not holy who said you're not righteous the devil is a liar the devil is a liar every tongue Lord God that has been lifted up against me my family my children my business my house my God you will condemn Come on, you will condemn. You're learning to pray the word. You're learning to pray this word. Don't stop. Don't stop. I'm teaching you to pray the word. I'm teaching you to pray the word. Just by this, I'm teaching you. Lord, every tongue. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Lord, 
Lord, every accusation over this house, uh, every accusation over the man of God over this house, uh, every accusation over Lord Mama P in this house my God Lord I break it down in the name of Jesus Lord will you cause every tongue to be twisted my God will you cause every demonic accusation to stop in the name of the Lord Rakonda Bakasi Ataka Yakonda Barakasi Andakem this is simple. I'm just teaching you how to pray. Hallelujah. 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 Second Timothy. Let me give you a few more examples. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Let's get it up there. It says, For God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We're going to pray this word over us, okay? So, so you're going to declare this. It's over there. And you learn to pray these things because when you're going through depression and confusion and disorder and anxiety, this is a powerful promise to pray. This is a powerful promise to pray. So you pray something like this. I make a declaration over my mind, Lord, that you have given me a sound mind. So right now, what you're going to do, put your hand on your head right now and begin to say you will live. Come on. Come on, Lord, you did not give me a spirit of fear. Lord, but you gave me a sound mind, my God. I know this looks weird, but some of you are struggling in your mind. Some of you, you might not be struggling right now, but you're going to need this. You're going to need this. You need to put this on us. Say, pray this after me. Say, Father, you did not give me a spirit of fear. Come on, come on, come on. You did not give me a spirit of fear. You gave me a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So I speak over my mind. I speak a sound mind. I speak over my anxiety. Lord, I speak over my fears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak to every lie. Lord, that the enemy speaks to me. Lord, I speak of every lie that my father has spoken over me, that my mother has spoken over me. Lord, that people of authority have spoken over me. In the name of Jesus, it shall bow down. It shall bow down. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, come and begin to pray, begin to pray. Lord, I disarm every confusion. I disarm every disorder. I disarm every fear. Lord, I disarm every depression. I disarm every anxiety. Lord, in this place, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, I take captive. Lord, every thought, uh, Ramando Bakasi and Lord, I take captive every thought, uh, Lord, that raises itself up uh, against the knowledge of Jesus Christ tonight. Uh, and I say, my God, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up. As you're beginning to pray, if you struggle with depression, I want to tell you that your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against every powers. Lord, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 Finally brothers Finally brothers Whatever is true Whatever is honourable Whatever is just Whatever is pure Whatever is lovely Whatever is commendable If there is any excellence If there is anything worthy of praise Think about these things What you have learned and received and heard And seen in me Practice these things And the God of peace will be with you And so right now I just want you to open up your mouth According to this word I want you to just say God you are so good Come on you Begin to praise him Come on, as you begin to praise him, I pray in the name of Jesus that depression be lifted, that fear be lifted. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
This is how you pray the word. 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 This is how you pray the word, church. Come on. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, I give you thanks, oh God. Lord, whatever is noble, whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is lovely, Lord, I think upon such things. I think upon such things. I think upon such things. Lord, I say, oh God, that you are good and your love endures forever, my God. So Father, let us not be weary in well-doing, oh God. But Lord, Lord, help us in the name of Jesus, oh God. Help us in the name of Jesus to continue to be persistent in prayer. So Lord, that we can see the goodness of God come to pass. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4, I am chosen. According to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, I am called of God. I am being changed into His image. These are words that the scripture speaks that you need to begin to declare. Be persistent in prayer because you are moving things in the realms of the spirit that you can't touch, but the Lord releases angelic force. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering. Pastor John, please come up. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. I want to just pick up on just a couple of bits and then we're going to pray one more time. 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. If we can get that up, this is what it says. 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. It says, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. So that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Let's look at it from the New King James. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. How do we war? This is what tonight's been about. We war with prophecy. How do we go to battle in the realm of the Spirit? We, we take the prophecy and we begin to war with the prophecy. I'm going to say something that I may get abuse online for, but I want to prove it to you as well because I believe it's so important with the revelation we're re receiving tonight. Prophecy is conditional. Just because you've received a prophetic word does not mean it's going to come to pass. Sorry, but people don't want to hear that. They want to hear if it's from God, it must happen. That's not, that's not biblical. Prophecy is just an invitation to come into the reality of what God wants to bring to pass upon the earth. There is a responsibility in the prophetic to take that prophetic word like we've heard tonight and birth it in the realm of the Spirit. Just because you've received a prophetic word does not guarantee that thing to happen. Like Paul says to Timothy, wage war with the prophecies. Just like Daniel took that prophetic word and he began to war in order to see it birthed. So you've got to take of that thing of the Spirit and cause it to be birthed through prayer and warfare. Can I, have you got time for me just to prove this to you from Scripture? The prophecy is conditional. Can I, can I show you this tonight? And then we're going to pray and then we're going to finish. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 15 and 17. If we can get that. 1 Samuel 9, 15 and 17. It says this. It says, Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying... Next verse. 
Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. Now, this is Samuel prophesying. Do you know who he's prophesying about? Saul. So Samuel the prophet comes to anoint Saul and God says, this is the man who will save my people from the Philistines. But can I tell you, that isn't what takes place. Saul is not the one who saves God's people from the Philistines. Who is the one who saves God's people from the Philistines? David. Can I tell you, it was never God's intention for David to be the one who saved the people from the Philistines. It was God's intention for Saul. We heard it tonight. It was never God's intention for Moses to spend 40 years in the wilderness. But, but, but something took place that changed the plan of God. The plan of God was that Saul would possess what God had prophesied into his life. But through disobedience, he made null the prophecy that God had released into his life. Oh, maybe you're too tired for this. There is a responsibility in the prophetic. Can we be really straight? Can I be really real with you? God may have prophesied a great destiny for your life, but if you walk away from God and begin to play around in the world, that prophecy will not come to pass. You can't mess around and still expect to God to fulfill His word. Every prophecy is conditional that you continue to walk in His ways. But like you've heard tonight, there is a responsibility. Just because you've received a prophetic word, there's got to be a responsibility that says, I'm now going to birth this thing. Birth what God has said for this house. Birth what God has said for this nation. Can I tell you, God still has plans for this nation. If, if, we, if we are concerned about this nation, then I want to tell you, we have a responsibility to go to war for this nation. There are prophecies over this nation. This is still the land of hope and glory. This is still God's green pastures. This is a nation that has known revival. This is a nation that has known awakening. I want to tell you there are many, many prophetic words over this nation that if we will begin to get on our knees again like Daniel. You you know, I had this moment of revelation when Pastor Keith was preaching. Here's the thing. When Daniel was praying, it wasn't even the full manifestation of the prophetic word. What the enemy tried to hold up in the spirit was actually the revelation before the manifestation. Are you, are you, I feel like you, that went over your head. The angel brings the message of what Daniel was seeking God for understanding for. Before the even the manifestation of this took place the enemy was trying to stop the revelation and so the enemy isn't just fighting for your manifestation he's fighting for your revelation before you experience your manifestation oh so we're going to pray one more time tonight we're going to wage warfare with the prophecies just begin to stir yourself right now. Male sime kimando, mala simando kimande, raba shande bebe kiki ki, robo sondo mande, raba shanda bebe kimando, robo sande be kimando, raba shanda baba sande he kimande, ralama simando romondo shimande. Kimanda, we're sending faith out right now to go get what we need right now. We we speak to every prophecy over this house. 
to begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. We speak to every prophetic word over the last 90 years of this church and we call it forth in the name of Jesus. We call forth signs and wonders in the name of the Lord. Malay Sando. Malay Shande. Kimando. Robo. Rebe. Sima. Ke. 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 Je. Rapa. Bale. 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 Kimando. Everything blocking revelation. We cancel this assignment right now. Everything blocking manifestation. We cancel this assignment now in Jesus' name. Male, Rabe, Kula Bashando. Ma. Every blockage in the spirit. Every withholding spirit, we remove you now in the name of Jesus. Everything holding back blessing goes right now in Jesus' name. Rabbi Kimando Shamende. Shifts now in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Shift, shift, shift. We call it forth in the name of Jesus. There's a shift right now. A shift right now. Whatever's been hindering shifts now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you heard our prayer from the first day we prayed. From the first day we began to see these balconies, you heard us in this place. And we thank you that it's going to manifest. We thank you for the manifestation of the fullness of what you promised. Malay, expansion, enlarge the place of your tent. You declared, enlarge the place of this tent. We call forth this promise tonight. Malay. Could everything withholding now moves. Moves right now in Jesus' name. Rabba, be ki ma, male silame, kilamo, robo, rebe, shando, kimando, rabe, baba, sha, hey, ko, rabo, sele, male, tileme, kilamondo, shilamando, rabba, baba, baye, I see one, kura, I see one, kura, mahala, ma, siya, bebe, kuku, kura, baye. Shababobo, Robo, Robo, Meme, Kimando, Kiki, ki, Raba, She, Kimando. Give me one more minute. Come on, church, push with me. Kodebe, Shalebe, Kiki, Robo, Robo, Rebe, Malo, Male. Could 
If you're here tonight and you feel like something's been blocking your destiny, I want you to come to the altar. You say, I just feel like there's been something stopping me from going forward. Maybe there's been something held up in the spirit. I want you to come. We're going to pray for you as we sing this. But you know there's a blockage tonight. You say, I don't know what there is, but something is blocking my destiny. We're about to shift it tonight. If I can have a bit more volume as well, give me a bit more. Male, Shile Me, let's sing this again and we're going to pray. Father, Spirit, and Son. Get praying. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in one.
of a god head dwells in one lion, shepherd, and lamb. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, I am. We gather round, we gather round.
Jesus. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, was buried in the tomb, and three days later he rose again from the dead. And the Bible tells us if we turn from our sins and we turn to him, we can be born again. Accepting his free gift of salvation by faith. Believe and confess with your mouth and you shall be saved. And if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor John, I want you to pray for me. I need Jesus to forgive me. Then I want to pray for you. If you're here tonight, you say, I need Jesus to come into my life. Give me a wave. Is there anyone tonight you say yes to Jesus? You say, I need Jesus. I never like to presume. But you're saying, I need to get born again in this house. Then I want to pray for you. If that's you, give me a wave. I'll give you five seconds. Is there anyone tonight? You're saying yes to Jesus in this place. Five. Four. Three, two. I don't know what could happen. You could leave this place tonight and get hit by a bus. I'm not prophesying. But you need to make sure you know where you're going. You know that heaven is your home. I want to lead you in a prayer. If that's you, give me a wave. I'll give you one last chance. If your heart's beating, you know I'm preaching to you. You say, I need Jesus to forgive me tonight. This is for me. And I want to pray for you. Is there anyone tonight? If not, we're going to pray for those watching online in case someone's watching tonight. I want everyone to say this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Tonight, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I turn from sin and I turn to you. I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I don't know, again, I'm going to do this every service, so you need to start getting used to it. But maybe there's someone here tonight who needs to get baptized. We baptized a couple of people this morning. But if you're here tonight and you say, yeah, I need to get baptized, give me a wave. Is there anyone tonight that wants to be baptized yeah over on the side then we're going to come and get ready for that and um, we'll sing again as we just prepare for that if you want to get yourself sorted if you're here and you want to get baptized and you've not been baptized we have a spare change of clothes we can give you a change of clothes if you you say i need that to happen tonight we'll do that for you Don't wait. If you are saved, get baptized. The Bible says, what hinders you from being baptized? And so we're going to do that for you. Just head over there if you want to be baptized. We'll sing one more time. We'll baptize and then we'll finish tonight.
Hallelujah. Just look this way for a moment. In fact, just come a little bit closer. Come and help me with this. Come and come on. Come on, let's celebrate what the Lord's doing. What's your name? Patricia Matawa. Patricia, do you turn from your sin? Yes, I do. And do you ask Jesus into your life? Yes, I do. Why do you want to be baptized? Uh, uh, this is, I was baptized before, but I just feel like and I just want to save the Lord with confidence. Um, and to say yes to Jesus, to his will, not my will no more. Yeah, so you're ready, you're making sure, you're saying this time is different, this time you're gonna walk in his ways, you're gonna follow him, amen. Patricia, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We gather round, put out our crowns before the one who has all power. I saw one seated on the Creation proclaims the one they can say. King of kings, seated all alone. We love all Israel, the Lord God is one. I saw one seated on the Creation proclaims the one they Jesus, thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else tonight that needs to get baptized? I'll give you a moment longer. If there's anyone you're here and you're like, yeah, I, I need this. Anyone else tonight? Holy Spirit's in the room. This is your time. You'd say, yeah, I know what I need to happen. If that's you, give me a wave. We'll take time. There's change of clothes. We can do it tonight. If that's you. Hallelujah. If not, I want you to reach out a hand. Just reach out right now. May the outrageous love of the Father, the extravagant grace of Master Jesus, and the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your best days are ahead of you. God is fighting for you. Things are shifting in the realm of the Spirit over your life. Even now, in this atmosphere, angels are warring on your behalf. And many are for you than are against you. And there is a mighty army, a legion of angels fighting on your behalf in the realm of the Spirit that you would conquer this week. And the promises of God would be fulfilled in your life. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord one more clap. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Don't miss next Sunday. Trevor Baker, a prophet from Birmingham, is in the house. We'll see you there. We'll see you next time. Thank you. We're going to be still praying. Don't be in a rush. We'll see you next time. Thank you.